Hello, this is Sharla, and I wanted to give a report on my health and, and some information that might help some of you. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, I've got a frog in my throat. I'm going to show you my little reborn baby. She's my therapy doll. Um, when you hold a reborn, it releases endorphins into your system, much like when you hold a real baby. And oh, It's just fun I, to change their clothes and, and make videos and be part of a community. You know, when we get ill and can't do the things that we used to do, we have to find other ways to do things. And and I, also, when you're sick, sometimes your old friends kind of go by the wayside, and we have to develop new friendships, and that's what I've done through the reborning. But back to my health. Um, I went to my pulmonolog pulmonologist, and, and he wanted me to have some testing done. Um, he thought that I had pulmonary hypertension from a... Uh, it was an ultrasound of the heart that gave him a reason to suspect that I might have pulmonary hypertension. So he uh, wanted me to have a right heart cath and another pulmonologist just in the group did the right heart cath and he found out that yes, I do have pulmonary hypertension and that's what's causing my breathing problems. Um, so then of course I had to go to the cardiologist and um, she started me on a new med three times a day. And if you can believe it, it's Viagra. Now, Viagra was first invented in, and introduced to the for pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary arterial hypertension. And when people started taking it, they realized, some of the men that started taking it, realized it was helping them with impotence. So that's how uh, Viagra began its use for impotence. It was initially for pulmonary hypertension. So I'm on that medicine now and I go to have another sleep study, um, another ultrasound of the heart, and then they want to do a left heart cath. Medicare guidelines have changed now so, and insurance guidelines too, so you can't just do a cath without doing non-invasive procedures first if it's not emergent. So um, she said that a lot of times sleep apnea can damage your heart in other ways. So she wants me to have that. I had one three years ago and they said I had sleep disturbances that I didn't get into REM sleep, but that I didn't have sleep apnea. So I have that to do and then do another uh, ultrasound of the heart. Now. You can read about pulmonary arterial hypertension. One of the causes is um, lupus. I think it's class three is the lupus. And she said that my pulmonary hypertension was caused by lupus and connective tissue disease, which is the Sjogren's disease. So um, some of the telltale signs that we didn't pick up on were I've had tachycardia for, well, since I was diagnosed with lupus and they've run a lot of tests and couldn't find out why I had such a high heart rate. It stays around 120 to 130. I'm on a medication for that, but come to find out that is one of the signs of pulmonary hypertension. Um, the blood builds up in the heart and the heart can't pump it fast enough to get it to the lungs and that's why you get short of breath. But you know, there was a girl on YouTube Angie, I think was her name, years ago that I watched, and she is actually the reason that I started using the cannabis oil, um, because she, I think she was diagnosed with pulmonary hypertension, and she started on it, and she did so well, um, and I think she moved where it was legal in California, and I think she completely recovered from it. So I'm still real positive, and having high hopes, um, it's not a good diagnosis to have, but hey, the doctors can say one thing, but you know, God only knows what's gonna happen in the future. And I'm not gonna accept that. I'm just gonna stay positive and do the best I can. But for those of us that have lupus, we know that lupus can attack any part of the heart or the lungs, any, any of the organs. Usually it's more common to hear of it attacking the kidneys maybe even the brain, it can attack the brain. But um, 
you don't know that it's attacking it, an organ until, you know, it's pretty severe and you start having symptoms. And that's when you find out. That's the hard part. But if you become real short of breath or have tachycardia, I suggest that you go to the doctor and ask them about it because had I known that those were the signs of pH, I would have done that. So I'm hoping that maybe by making this video, I can help some of you. Um, shortness of breath, tachycardia, there's some other signs and symptoms, but those are the main two that I had that might have led to further investigation to come up with this diagnosis. But the only way to really know is through a right heart cath, usually done by the pulmonologist. I'm encouraged that my pulmonologist is a new doctor and I've only been to him three times and I'm very encouraged because all these years um, they didn't pick up on it and he I saw him one time and he immediately ordered these tests and came up with the reason why I'm short of breath so I'm hoping that after I have these tests and and they uh, find out everything exactly what's going on that maybe I'll get on some medicine or something that will help me and I'd like to start into the cardiac rehab to get some exercise and like she said though you've got to get your breathing better before you can start that and they want to make sure that my heart's strong enough which I can still get around good and and uh, you know I'm doing well I'm not short of breath at all when I sit it's just when I walk or, or move around I get short of breath the worst time is when I sit down for about three or four minutes, I have air hunger, and it's real scary, and it, it feels horrible, um, and then it'll just pass. It's when the heart is trying to get that blood pumped, but um, that passes, and when it leaves, you just feel normal again. It's just the oddest thing that you could feel that bad for three or four minutes and then come out of it. Thank God, come out of it. So that's my little health update. Uh, still using the same cannabis oil. Um, it was recommended that I use the tincture, which I did. But you see, the tincture only has CBD. And it doesn't have the THC. And I suffer from pain and insomnia. And I need the, the THC for those two things. Which, it helps my sleep a lot. And um, I have learned that lack of sleep can really, really be damaging to your heart. So, folks, it's really important that we sleep. And if you think you have sleep apnea, please go get it tested and and get, get it treated because that can also damage your heart. But I have to continue with the oil with the CBD and the THC. CBD is good for anybody because we need those cannabinoids in our body to heal and fight infections and things and um, it would be good to take the tincture for everybody to take the tincture because it can only help you especially if you have stomach problems it's, it's wonderful for that but in my case I need both the CBD and the THC so I'm just going to continue with what I'm taking and um, and see where we go from there if any of you have pulmonary hypertension I sure wish you'd write to me and and uh, I'd like to talk to you and find out more about your journey. Um, and if you don't have it, praise the Lord. If you have lupus, just be aware of your body. If there's any changes, even subtle changes, tell your doctor about it. If they don't seem to know what's wrong, just keep on pushing because you know your body better than anybody. And, you know, maybe I should have pushed a little harder. I could have gotten treatment earlier, but can't look back. Just got to look forward. And it is a beautiful day here. Matter of fact, this is the first day that this year that we've had to turn on our air conditioner because it is got, it's hot out there. Um, I don't think it's like but 85 that the house got hot. And uh, with chronic illness, you know, when you get hot, you get sick all over. So my husband is kind enough to keep it really cool for me. And I appreciate that. I'm trying to eat a lot healthier. Uh, of course, they said to stay away from hot dogs and sausage and 
things like that. So I'm eating chicken and fish, and fruit, and I'm really trying to eat real, real healthy. I'm going to start juicing again and hoping to plant some garden and have some fresh vegetables because that would be great too. So um, if you're watching this, I appreciate it. And if you know anything about the topic, I'd appreciate your input. Thank you very much for watching. And this is just a little bit of a health update and for my records. Thank you and God bless from West Texas. Bye-bye.